Hey everyone, this is Athletes in Antiquities, and in today's market discussion, I want to talk about the infancy of the Pokemon market and dive into its growth potential as it ages and matures. So to start this video off, I first want to talk about Pokemon's more established big brother, which are sports cards. So sports like baseball and boxing are old as dirt, to be frank, and therefore baseball cards are also old as dirt. Widely considered the oldest baseball cards ever printed are by Peck and Snyder in 1868. Let's just like think about that for a minute. For context, the Civil War ended in 1865, just three years earlier. When these cards were printed, Ulysses S. Grant was just elected into office and Wyoming wasn't even a territory yet. It's kind of crazy to think about like what the world was like when those, when those cards were being printed and how different it compares to like a, like a Pokemon of today. It's just, it's just wild. So here I have a boxing card from 1910 and a 1952 uh, Jackie Robinson card. And these two symbolize vintage cards in the sports card world. And on the right, I have a first edition uh, Zapdos and an unlimited Charizard to symbolize vintage Pokemon. Because we're, we're going to be doing some uh, comparing and contrasting and just kind of setting the scene for how these two things differ. So clearly the, vin the term vintage means two very different things in each hobby. As you can see between the cards on the left here with Mickey Mantle and uh, Josh Jeffries and on the right there with Zapdos and Charizard. Like vintage means two completely different things. But people relentlessly draw comparisons between the two. They're always comparing vintage Pokemon and com comparing it to sports as if it somehow holds a candle. And in this video, I'm going to kind of talk about why that's kind of a, a, a misguided approach. So one of the big differences is that with sports cards is it ranges from kids just getting their first pack all the way to senior citizens collecting the players from the 50s that they grew up watching like Mickey Mantle and others. No matter how old you are, sports cards existed for decades before you were even born. Due to this massive range of people in the sports card hobby, there's a lot of money in it. There's a really good video um, by Jake from Pokonomics that you guys should check out. It's on his Patreon. But he made a very interesting video about how the market cap for 1986 Fleer, Michael Jordan, just that one card, just the 1986 Fleer Michael Jordan, is larger than all of Pokemon base set, jungle, and fossil combined. So if you don't know what market cap is, basically you take the price of a certain card or a certain item and you multiply it by its population. So what Jake did was he took the prices of PSA 1 through PSA 10 Michael Jordans and multiplied it by the populations of each of those cards. And that market cap was higher than all first edition base, all shadowless cards, all unlimited cards, all jungle first edition unlimited, all those up through fossil, all those cards in the PSA registry broken down by price, he multiplied them out and the Jordan just that one card is worth worse, worth more than those three sets of Pokemon combined. It's crazy how big the market of sports is and how minuscule Pokemon is. We're, we're in the weeds of Pokemon, so we think it's everywhere, but in the grand scheme of things, it's really not. So that just kind of shows how young the Pokemon hobby is compared to sports cards. So while people of all ages grew up with sports cards, the opposite is true for Pokemon. Pokemon as an IP originated in 1996 and it swept across the world in 1999. So we're just gonna do a little bit of uh, estimations here, but let's say the average fan of Pokemon at that time was 12 years old. I'm sure there are some older, some younger, but let's say the average age of a Pokemon fan in 1999 was 12 years old. That means that those oldest fans of Pokemon at this moment in 2022 are about 35 years old. Sure, there are exceptions like, you know, like Gary, uh, the guy that went on Pawn Stars, uh, like guys like him that are much older are the exception to that. 
but those are people that more just like had kids that were in the hobby and well he he was just invested regardless but the average age of a person in the hobby at the time was a child so for the most part like the oldest fans of pokemon that grew up in it are about 35 we're just gonna go with that currently so on screen now is a graph detailing how average income changes as someone gets older and as we can see the pokemon market is currently only capturing up to that 35 year old bracket because this is assuming that people older than that that didn't grow up with pokemon they're not very nostalgic for it for it so pretty much all the consumers of this are people that were nostalgic in 1999 and to the present so under 35 years of age is the primary income bracket for people that are buying this stuff. And you can compare that to sports cards where they have that entire range. There's old guys, there's young guys, there's everyone in between. Like the sports card hobby doesn't have this kind of current cap at around 35, maybe even bring it up to 40. But there's a large increase in average income per person after that age that the Pokemon market just hasn't captured yet. So like, cause like sports cards, they have this like revolving door of people of all of these earning brackets. So they have a much larger pool to draw from. And that's where a lot of those higher prices come from. And as the oldest members of the Pokemon community continue, uh, reach these higher income earning years, it, the question is to be asked, what more of that money will funnel into the market and into the hobby? I'm assuming when people that are Pokemon fans turn 40, 45, 50, assuming they don't stop collecting, more money is gonna be drawn into the hobby as those people get into their higher income earning years. And who knows what that's gonna do, but there's a good chance that it will increase in some capacity. So this is more of just a quick video that I kinda of wanted to explain just to see what you guys thought about this. But in closing, the reason why I made this video is I see a lot of talk about people comparing grails of Pokemon to the grails of sports. People compare first edition base uh, Charizard prices to 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle. I see people comparing 1986 Fleer Jordan to uh, the Pikachu Illustrator. And like, obviously like you can, same thing is happening with like Honus Wagner and stuff like that. And all of these just seem very uh, like nonsensical. Cards like that, cards like the Honus Wagner, the Mickey Mantle, they're in another stratosphere than Pokemon is currently. But as the Pokemon hobby matures, who knows where those cards will rank? You know, currently, a Mickey Mantle is head and shoulders above a Charizard, but if you can say that the Mickey Mantle means as much to the sports card hobby as the first edition Charizard does to Pokemon, as the maturity of the Pokemon market increases, could those two things get closer together? Maybe, maybe not, because the Mickey Mantle is, sports are bigger than Pokemon, sports are, uh, they're everywhere, even like casual people will watch the World Series, they'll watch the Super Bowl, and we're not seeing that quite with Pokemon, so it's not a one-to-one, -one. but as the Pokemon market does mature, will, the, with, will those items start to be comparable? You know, maybe, maybe not. But I just kind of wanted to explain this because right now they're so far apart that it's you can't even compare them. There is no equivalent to the Honus Wagner. There is no equivalent to the Mickey Mantle because it's too the, the hobby is too young. The Honus Wagner, it was uh, in 1912, around the same year as this card, this Josh uh, Jeffries boxing card. There, there can't be an equivalent to this card because this card is over a hundred years old. It's had over a hundred years to uh, become scarcer and scarcer for mint copies to get damaged. It just, it's such a different world that it's hard to draw those comparisons, yet people try to do it anyway. And I think it'll take a little while for that to be more of a logical comparison uh, based on the, the, the newness of the Pokemon hobby, like I was explaining earlier. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. Um, do you think any of that makes sense? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, let me know. Thanks. Bye.